What is up guys and welcome to Formula One 2012. We are back and I said that we were back because we have to try out the champions mode of this game. Basically we are pitted against all the current Formula One world champions and uh, we have to beat them in individual challenges and then in the final we see if we can become the champion of champions. So let's go to proving grounds, champions mode. Let's do this. <laughs> What's with the graphics? Didn't even look like Kimmy. And just about to start, the final few laps of this thrilling race at Spa is Kimi Raikkonen in a modest seventh position. He's been complaining of tyre trouble all weekend. There goes his teammate in the sister Lotus Renault. He's behind, but on a brand new set of option tyres. I think he might actually work his way up and into the points. And at this rate, challenge Kimi. I think we're in for a dramatic few laps. All right, so here we are in the first challenge in the Lotus Renault, or just Lotus, uh, around the Belgian Grand Prix, we've got... Up on a group of slow moving cars, trying to pass them quickly. Oh dear, we've got about three, four laps to get these guys. Thankfully, it's a long lap around here in Spa. But my goodness, there is a lot of traffic at play here. I'm not too sure how hard this is going to be. This could be quite easy, but I will push on regardless. I, I think I remember this not being the uh, legend difficulty they only had like easy medium and hard um, but I from what I remember I think these challenges get harder as we go along oh my bruh the power cuts are, are brutal I'm losing so much time I think I've <laughs> I think I've lost more time on this lap than what I've gained come on stop running wide like look at all the time we lose and we're out of flashbacks um, yes, I already used one prior to uh, that big boy mistake. And uh, we've only got like a lap and a half left to do this. Like, it's not like we have too much time. I can't believe. Oh, I, I don't want to tempt fate too early, but I feel like we might be losing this one, Chief. Can I please get past all the red stuff? I've been sitting behind this guy forever. Finally. Massa's next. Ah! Wee, fun, give me more. Come on, give me DRS. Yes, that's what we want to see. Ideally, I need to get past Paul the Racer on this first lap. I can't, I can't be oh, leaving things to chance. That was, that was a really slow on this attempt. I don't know, like nothing has changed. No! What have I done wrong here? Just gone in too fast? Turned in from the curb, potentially? I don't know, there was no like, nothing wrong here. It was just like, oh, now we've lost it. So, which, that was, that was rather odd. Let's do a rewind in the middle of a corner. That's always good. Okay, we're fine. I was a little bit worried there, but I just gotta be careful from here on in. I thought this was gonna be easy. Oh, that curve, man, that curve is brutal. I forgot how bad the curves were sometimes on these games that's that's one of them you just it's you never touch it otherwise it's into death all right big boy dive bomb coming up here into the bus stop chicane oh that, that just press on that never happened that never happened no I, here we go side by side up rouge don't mind if i do mark weber and alonso did it in 2012 or 2013 we just did that casually on a pad. Oh, for God's sake. You know what, that probably happened for the best because I feel like the penalty I would have got would have been like 20 seconds or something ridiculous like that. The penalties on this game were very fair. There's a group of slower cars just ahead of you. Out of the way, dickhead. No, he's falling away, he's falling away. I want to dive bomb here into Lacom. I'm going to do it anyway. Oh. Thank you very much. That was tidy. <laughs> Believe it or not, that was the first time I actually pulled up properly for the bus stop. Across the line. 
54. We're improving. Get away from me. Oh no! Go away. I do not want to be repeating this challenge. We've got seven of these to do. Seven? Yeah, something like that. Massa going defensive. Let's see if we can go around the outside of this guy, just like we did to Kobayashi. No. <laughs> Who are you kidding, Ben? This is a Lotus. Here we go. Squeeze and pass. These back markers are making me nervous. Please hold your line. P9. I see Kimmy. I see Mr. Raikkonen. We've got a chance, lads. I didn't think this challenge would be so hard. I remember this being absolutely bang easy when I did it back in the day. Like I could do this in one take and probably gap Raikkonen by about five seconds. Like that's how slow I am now. <laughs> Maybe I'm not corner cutting enough. Uh, I want to push through there, but I can't. The uh, consequences of running wide there are just too much. I could probably use all my um, fuel as well. I've been a bit conservative with that. I keep chucking it down in the stand. See, I keep thinking that my engine's going to overheat and I'm going to lose horsepower. I really shouldn't worry about this on F1 2012. Here we go. Last throw of the dice here on the last lap of the Belgian Grand Prix. We are in the slipstream of Rosberg and Raikkonen. This is going to have to be a double dive bomb in here. And uh, shut up, Jeff. This is not the time. This is not the time. Oh, I should have been on the inside. We're going to switch to the... Oh! We're going to pull it off! Oh! You're joking. Nah, you're joking. You are absolutely joking. What have I actually got a penalty for? So I've... Oh, I've clipped his right rear tire. Like, literally grazed it. And that, my friends, is disqualification worthy on F1 2012. You have got to be joking me. So we're going to have to pull this overtake off again. Without contact. Wish me luck. Okay. That was a lot easier than I thought it was. Thankfully we were able to clear Rosberg. We need to clear our teammate. Oh, that was close. Don't disqualify me for that, please. Across the line. It is done. Thank goodness for that. With drivers always comparing their performances with their teammates, it's probably not been a good day for Kimi Raikkonen, as his fellow Lotus driver was able to get past him before the end of the race. Boom. P7. Uh, just a casual three seconds faster than my teammate. We uh, <laughs> literally got that done at the last breath. I'm, I'm actually, more than anything, I'm just relieved that I don't have to do that again, and we can move on to the next one. Right, so that's Kimmy out of the way. Next up, we have Lewis Hamilton, the overtake master, apparently. Is he still known as an overtake master? Not really, because he doesn't really have to overtake anyone these days. Do you try and stay out on slicks or make a stop for intermediate tires? Whatever you decide, your objective is to finish ahead of your teammate. I see what you're doing here, Codemasters. You are... <laughs> You're making me play the Felipe Massa or the Timo Glock role at Brazil. All right. I get you. Let's do this. They said we were in for an unpredictable race and they may just be right. I can see Lewis Hamilton leaving his pit box with a set of intermediates on. It's starting to rain. It's He's quite a bit weather. behind his teammate, but on current conditions, on a much, much better tyre. I'm not sure his teammate is going to be able to resist a hard-charging Lewis Hamilton. I don't know why, but the graphics in the cutscenes look way worse than the actual gameplay. I think it's because we've got uh, modern graphics on our hands, but uh, away we go for the... 2012 Brazilian Grand Prix 
it is 2008 all over again. Except kind of roles reversed. We can potentially win the championship if we stay in front. And that would deny Hamilton his second world title. I, the, the logic doesn't really make sense because this is what transpired in 2012, but we're recreating 2008 in the 2012 game. I like your creative creativity, Codemasters. This really is a cool mode. Like, I feel like it probably went underappreciated back in the day, but now it's actually really cool to have all these cutscenes and have Crofty narrate and set the scene, and then you have to go about and and beat the challenge. I like it. But uh, anyway, we're circulating around here on dry tires on a wet track. The tires feel absolutely fine. That, I imagine that would get worse. But right now, I feel like I have the same amount of grip as what I do in the dry. Like, look at me. I'm flowing the car around massively. Still setting purple sectors. Maybe a little bit less grip there. But otherwise, no consequences for going flat out here. 18 seconds to Hamilton. Surely we've got this in the bag. I hope, I hope that this wasn't how every wet race was on F1 2012. It's like, how the hell do you know then when to, when to switch rinses if this is still absolutely fine? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh! It, no, it's not fine. It's not fine. Here where I am. False sense of security. And then, whoopsie. Maybe it was the curb. I think it was the curb more than anything that cost me there. Uh, but I've got to be careful now. But I can't remember how I used to handle this back in the day. As we go purple. Okay. I, I feel... Oh my god, we've extended the gap to Hamilton. You're joking. This... <laughs> well, this one is broken. <laughs> I feel like back in the day, you probably could have actually pitted for intermediate tyres, which is against the protocol of how you should tackle this and probably still chase him down and beat him. I feel like you could probably win this one of either two ways. But staying out on the dry seems like an easy win. As I lose the back end again, I feel like I may be about to eat my words as the tire graphic is saying. They're getting pretty chilly now. Yeah, grip is definitely gone now. We are not going to go purple anymore. Having to lift off now. The back end is getting very slippery. Through to Jung Chao. Nice and progressive on the power. I'm just going to back this off a lot because we've got margin in hand. One mistake and that probably will be Lewis nabbing us. Oh, and one thing as well, localized weather. Some parts of the track can be actually more wet than others. And I actually spoke about this in a recent video. It might be yesterday or the day before. So it's funny how we've gone full circle and we're back on 2012. Regardless... It's the last lap of the Grand Prix. We have 18 seconds in hand. We're keeping a Williams behind us. Who's got intermediates on. So we're not, not losing too much here as we... Ah! Oh! Cut the canes on wet. That's an overreaction. If anything, the rain has just started to ease off a little bit. It was raining heavier at the start. Am I right or am I wrong? I'm probably wrong. Maybe I'm just getting more used to it. Hamilton finally makes some inroads. He's only taken a second out of us here in the middle sector. And that Kimi Raikkonen challenge was hard, but this this seems easy AF. Don't touch those puddles. That may be the next step in the Codemasters games. Like, you know how in Forza they have big puddles that you can literally aquaplane on? That's probably what we need next. Have Germany levels of um, torridness in the rain. But here we go through the final kink and we're going to take a pretty easy victory. Hamilton, it seems, has come nowhere near us and Jensen is going to claim the victory. The weather didn't dampen any of the excitement out on track as Lewis Hamilton set his sights on hauling in his teammate. Despite having the advantages of the wet weather and an early pit stop, he ultimately couldn't beat his teammate. Yeah, <laughs> that was, uh, that's quite scary how easy that was. Um, we got the gap, or well, Lewis got the gap down to 17 and a half seconds, but then we extended the gap again in sector three. So really, I feel like Lewis never 
never even reeled us in a bit. So, yeah. Job done. What do you make of that, Lewis? Not the Rain Master anymore, eh? Alright, so that's those two out of the way. The two single-time world champ- Oh, we've got one more single world champion. Then we've got the double. Double. And then the maestro. During the safety car period, you've taken the opportunity to pit for tyres, looking to work your way back through the field. Take full advantage of being on the right rubber at the right time, and take the win. Oh, I don't like this. Wet tyres? Are you sure we shouldn't just be on dries? They seem to be OP. What you doing there, Jensen? Did I catch you there at a bad time? We're on the final laps of the Silverstone Grand Prix, and Jensen Button leads from a fortunate Felipe Massa in second, and Sebastian Vettel in third. Jensen took the lead from his teammate just before the safety car incident, but can he hold on to this without pitting? I think his teammate sitting in ninth could do this. Safety car's coming in, the hunted turns hunter. Well, here we go. I remember this one quite fondly, uh, because you had to do a lot of overtaking. Alright, let's get ready to go. Ready to rumble, rich mixture. How much fuel have we got to play? Five laps of extra fuel. We can be in rich for a considerable amount of time in this Grand Prix. Away we go for the closing stages of the British Grand Prix. Oh, I've bowled a wide already. Oh, I think actually, from what I remember, it was a bit of a risk going on to wets. Um, so for the first lap or so, we may be... I think we're a little bit slower, but then as the race goes on, it really comes into fruition. Wonderful. So, a little update on the race. We've been very slow. Probably up until this point, we're starting to close them in. The gap did get out to about 5-6 seconds. But now, just in this first half of the lap alone, we've halved that. And probably even more so, the gap is coming down rapidly now and this last lap of the British Grand Prix these overtakes are all gonna come in very quick succession because they're all trapped on intermediate tires here we go past Raikkonen just remember what happened in Spa don't touch anyone because it will probably result in disqualification so I've got to be a clean boy about this despite them absolutely dawdling around now at this point of the Grand Prix Another thing I have to watch out for as well, mistakes. Can't afford any. It's very easy to overstep the mark on a pad. And since I already used up my first flashback, literally in the first two corners of the race, got to be a good boy. Purple. Don't know how I've gone purple, despite the conditions getting worse than what they were. But regardless, get past Vettel. Masters next. Oh, Button, this is going to be easy. A candy from a baby. Thank you very much. That is the lead. I thought this was actually going to be pretty tough. But the conditions really came to me in the last, like, 90 seconds. What's the gap now? It's got to be, like, 20 seconds, nearly. It's unbelievable how much time we pulled out. 11 seconds. 11 seconds. We've got shades of 2008 Silverstone here. With the Lewis Hamilton side of the garage here. I thought, I thought this was supposed to get harder as we go along, but regardless, it's a home win. A fantastic drive saw Jensen Button's McLaren teammate take the chequered flag. Considering the conditions and a safety car being called for an on-track incident, the driver can be very happy to have taken home the spoils in today's race. Oh yeah. I don't know whether to, uh, I don't know whether I'm supposed to be Lewis Hamilton or I'm just like myself. I think I'm just myself, so I don't know why I keep putting myself in the in the in the seat of the actual driver who I'm supposed to be driving as but regardless that is another gold medal I think we're just about halfway there honestly I thought this was meant to get harder as it goes along so far the Kimi Raikkonen challenge has been the hardest by a mile My character looks suspiciously lot, a lot like Jensen. But, 
three gold medals out of the way. Shame this isn't the Olympics. Otherwise, I'd be carrying Australia's hopes of glory on my shoulder. We are only good at swimming. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why I mentioned that, but we are moving on now to Sebastian Vettel catching past Seb while setting the fastest lap of the race. Give it everything to not only catch and pass Sebastian, but set the fastest lap of the race in the process. What track is this going to be though? That's what I want to know. Maybe Korea or something? I feel like it'll be something out there. First and second looks to be on the cards for Red Bull, but it's too tight to predict which of Red Bull's drivers will actually win this race. Vettel crosses the line, and now his teammate in hot pursuit. Both have traded wins and fastest laps this season, and neither consider victory complete without the fastest lap of the race too. Okay. I did make mention of not putting myself in the driver's shoes, but how can I not when I'm in the position of Mark Webber Number two driver <laughs> at the German Grand Prix. A place where Mark himself got his first win. It wasn't at this track, it was at the Nürburgring. But uh, we've got to chase down our young, young protege to win on his home turf. When I think of Hockenheim now, I can't help but think of Sebastian's mistake in 2018. You, do, you all know what I'm talking about. If you don't, where have you been? But Seb made a, a, a vital error heading into the hairpin at the stadium section, which Seb is actually approaching now. Lost the lead and possibly his chances of winning that title all at this corner. Then there was the redemption arc in the 2019 season where... Seb was down the order, like pretty much last. I don't remember what happened to him in qualifying. But he recovered to get P2 in what was probably the most Three laps to go. amazing Grand Prix of the season. And uh, kind of saw a bit of a return to form for Seb after that. Kind of. It'll be interesting to see what happens in 2020. First bottle of the... Uh, the afternoon, it, you knew it was coming. Bloody curbs. Oh, that's some bad traffic for Seb. Right when you don't want it as well. The apex of a slow corner. He's still fighting side by side with one of the Marushas. Oh, come on, Seb. Get past him. Oh, this is a horrendous lap for Seb. Absolutely horrendous. In Team Seb, we're going to come across the line and still hold on to the fastest lap. But we are within touching distance as we head on to the penultimate lap of this German Grand Prix. We smell blood in the water now. All we need is a nice exit out of here. And the gold medal in diving. What sport would you call this? Let's call this the bobsled. Winter Olympics. Slipstream. We're absolutely maxing out here at 298 kilometers an hour to the inside of the hairpin. And we are through now for the lead of the German Grand Prix. Wide out there. But covered him off. And this should be ours now. It's just kind of dawned on me, like literally right now, that this is this is the format. That this laid the foundations. Like this this game mode right here. It's basically what the F1 Esports qualification route is these days. You're chucked in a random scenario. And you're racing AI in what is a 100% race, but you only do like five laps or so. And uh, do well enough and you're in eSports. It's kind of cool to think about. Okay, big bottle there. We're still good though. <laughs> oh, this is the finish. Oh, wow. Not bad for a number two driver. Cheers. <laughs> wow. As if that's just happened. Sebastian Vettel was probably thinking he had the race all tied up and just had to bring the car home to win. But it seems like his Red Bull teammates had different ideas, ensuring Vettel wasn't able to add to his win tally. Ah, oh, Seb, I'm so sorry. Your eyes would have been 
as big as dinner plates when you saw that I had like a, a half spin out of the final corner on the final lap. I was just a bit docile there. I had no idea what was going on. I was just cruising. Honestly, I thought we had an extra lap after that. <laughs> if I would have known that was the last lap, I would have been concentrating a bit more. But there we go. <laughs> just hold on. Gold medal. We have beat the stat man. I swear no one has ever called him the stat man. But okay. We move on. Here are all the victims. Four world champions left in our wake. Two to go. The home fans are expecting a 1-2 finish for Ferrari. You have just five laps to make your way to the front, finishing first. Fernando is faster than you. Here we are for the Italian Grand Prix. Fernando Alonso is on pole position, much to the delight of the crowd and the Ferrari team. He says he's determined to win this one and would love to finish 1-2 with his teammate, who sits in seventh place. Everything is possible, though, as the lights come on and we prepare for the start. Oh, here we go. They've abolished 100% uh, races in Formula 1. We're only doing five lap Grand Prix now. But here we go for the Italian Grand Prix. It is lights out and away we go. You guys can see just how bad the AI are on starts on the older games. Or maybe just how OP they are on modern. Whichever way you take it, they are a lot easier these days. But we pretty much have our group position after the turn one chicane into P3. Oh, the L. You expect your teammate to get into P2. Big boy dive bomb into the middle sector chicane. Thank you very much. It's already a 1-2. At first I was thinking, hang on a second. Like, realistically, if you're on pole and, like, your teammate is starting from P7, expecting them to get a 1-2, that's, you know, it's a bit much to ask, but... Maybe it's not. <laughs> I mean, fair enough if you've got like a Mercedes 2014 OP car, but this is this is the 2012 Ferrari. Many people were lauding Fernando for how he was able to drag this car up from the depths of P5, where the car maybe should have been, I don't know. Or at least compared to where Massa was. But old mate here is expecting the world of me and we're gonna see if we can deliver. Fernando seems pretty fast in this one, not gonna lie. Oh! One of the Red Bulls is gone. I think that was Vettel. His spinning days have begun early. <laughs> Surely that wasn't scripted. I feel like I feel like that was just a genuine mistake, but funny that it happens now in, in 2019. Come on, Fernando! Slow down! Three laps to go. Not really caught him by much. I can't, I, if I make any mistakes, I don't think I'll get this guy. Rotation is horrendous there. On the pad, you have to wait for the, the wheel, the in-game wheel, to straighten up so you can turn again. If I had instantaneous lock-to-lock -lock rotation, I would I'd be so much faster through there, but it's a little tricky. I feel for all the pad players out there. Chicane. Rotation there isn't too bad. It's just the first chicane at lower speed. It's just a bit horrendous. Do we have DRS? We're pretty close this time around. Oh, no, we've just missed out. I feel like we were only eight tenths away the first sector split. Gap is now out to 1.3. So Fernando was quite strong middle sector through the Lesmos. He definitely made up some time. I just, I just need... If we get the Slipstream and the DRS, it's game over. It's just a case of getting there first. That's the tricky bit. We've got no bloody ERS. No, curse to use out of the final corner, which is definitely costing me a bit of time here. Oh, we, oh, we do have DRS now. Despite being 1.2 seconds behind. That's that's lucky. But we're definitely getting a tow now. Well and truly. 
Little Sector Chicane. Again, you can absolutely cheese this. Doesn't matter what game it is. I can probably cut a Scarry more. That's probably what I should start doing. Here we go. Bando, which way are you going to go? I'm going to go to the inside. And make this stick. It's a big boy lunge. I barely even pull off the... Ah, oh, okay. Yep. Yep, that's just happened. Fernando's the race leader. You can get second if you push. Thank you. Fernando's sat in first at the moment. I know! Stop telling me! Time to cheese all the corners. Wait, do I only need second here? I think I only need second here. I was stressing about overtaking Fernando, but I only need to get Jensen, I think. I think. Let's cheese Ascari. Big cheese. Parmesan on my big tasty pizza. I don't mind. And here we go. To the last corner. This is a done deal, surely. Ferrari power versus Mercedes. And that is a 1-2 for the Tafosi at Monza. It's a bit hairy on that last lap, I'm not going to lie, but I feel like that is job done. Yes, it is. Thank goodness. How have we got first? Oh! For Ferrari fans today, the team were unable to achieve the one-two finish they were hoping for. <laughs> Wait. Um, I've passed the goal, but like technically I shouldn't have because Fernando's got a 10-second time penalty. I've given it. I've given him the penalty, haven't I? But I still, I still passed the goal. I thought the goal was one-two for Ferrari. We we cheesed it. Sorry to make reference to that so many times. Are well, we going to continue? Oh no! We failed! <laughs> we shot ourselves in the foot. Classic Ferrari. Oh no. All I needed was second. Wow, catch! Oh, uh, no, never mind. I still had to finish ahead of him, so I won. The, I won the challenge. I beat Fernando, but as a catch twenty-two, needed old mate and P two. That is that is very sneaky, Code Masters. Watch as we go from seventh to first at turn one. I am not playing any games here. There we go. Easy as pie. Fernando, please. Please do not have a penalty from that. Otherwise, I will be absolutely livid. Here's why this scenario sucks. But it's also kind of good in a way. Because it makes it difficult. Imagine if Fernando just like, just gets overtaken by Hamilton. Through no fault of my own. So we have to do the challenge again. Oh, here he goes. I'm going to have to do some A-grade scripting here to make sure that my teammate gets P2. Dear Ferrari, if Fernando has a penalty, you best tell me about it now. I won't be mad, but I will be. I will be if you, if you leave me to the end of the race and I find out that my teammates are standing on the podium with me. Wow. Maximum cheese achieved. Final corner. I've held up my end of the deal. Fernando, I hope you've done yours. It's not uncommon for the top teams to have a one-two finish in the racing calendar, but to do it on your home turf is particularly special. And for Ferrari and their fans today, this will be a day to remember for a long time. Thank goodness for that. Let's just leave it at that. We've beaten our teammates. Flying Fernando challenge. Bloody hell. <laughs> if, uh, if, if Fernando had some kind of underlying penalty that I didn't know about, I was literally going to flip some tables. That Santander logo, logo looks like it's 
glow in the dark. Some reflective material there. Roll on the final challenger, Mr. Michael Schumacher. You only have six laps to catch and pass Michael Schumacher. Finishing ahead of him is all that matters. All those world championships <laughs> on one helmet. That's not intimidating. Michael Schumacher, who is on lap 50 of 56, has just gone by. His car is definitely easier on its tyres than his teammate, who I can see in the pit. Yes, he's had to stop again. Disaster, surely. This may well have ruined his race. He's going to have to put qualifying lap after qualifying lap in if he's going to have any chance of taking something from this weekend. Wow. You're telling me from the onboards that Michael is halfway around the lap and we're coming out of the pit lane and we've got to beat him in six laps? All right. <laughs> Whoa. Michael is falling back massively. He was at the head of that queue. A massive queue and now he's towards the back of it. What? Surely you should have made a pit stop, son. Oh, this is an angry train. And like Michael is literally right there. I can see him. He's at the apex. Oh my goodness. They've really done it dirty with this challenge. Oh, to the inside. That was a surprise move. Even surprised myself. With that one. Maldonado was dispatched of. Massa's next. Should be able to get this guy here. Couldn't even get Schumacher here. If we're brave enough. Let's go send it anyway. Please don't get a penalty for... Having Mike... Oh yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. I don't know. I don't know. I don't... How was that illegal? I don't know. I, I would love to know how that was an illegal overtake. Stewards are obviously on his side. Anytime we go for a move now, they'll just say it's illegal. I'll have permanent yellow flags thrown out around the circuit. But one question that I want to know is like, how worn are this guy's tyres? It was half a lap ahead during the cutscenes. And in one lap, he went from being at the head of a queue to the back of it. So many questions. Defensive into the final corner. That's, an, that's a free invitation for us to go around the outside. Which only spurs me on. If I see someone going defensive, whether it be career mode, online or whatever, that only encourages me to go around the outside and go deep under brakes. Like, we're going to do it to the rest of here as well. A bit hard to do it around the outside at the first turn, considering how wide and open it is. But, get it done anyway. P8. How far up the grid can we get? we still got three laps to go. Could even challenge for a podium. But the challenge is already done. I don't... Probably a good idea not to go too ham. Because we know how broken the penalty system is on this game. I am so tempted to go for the double dive bomb. But we will play it safe. We'll take Fernando here. And Weber on this one. Thank you very much. That was a nice move. As an added challenge, I'm going to see if I can get myself on the podium here. Two corners left to do this. You saw we just overtook Raikkonen in pretty impressive fashion. No DRS on this little straight here. Actually, I'm going to have to go full send here, so I'm going to use all of the curves. Can we get close enough to dive bomb Jensen Button to get a podium? That would mean absolutely nothing. Potentially throw it away. No, we cannot. So it's going to be P4. That crucially, we have beaten our final challenger. Michael Schumacher must have felt a little disappointed that his tyre strategy let him down. He might have been ahead of his teammate, but running on the slower, older tyres was just too much of a disadvantage. And by the end of the race, his teammate had passed him. Something's definitely gone wrong there because Hamilton has not lapped everybody. 
I finished the race, so that's a bit weird. But that race itself definitely dragged on a lot. That was a, what, a six lap race and we got it done on lap two or three. Um, yeah, we were definitely just circulating along there for far too long. But we have beaten simply the best. That is our final gold medal. Oh, I thought he was going to be sad there. He looked a little bit downbeat for a second. But we have one final task to do. We've got to beat all the world champions in one foul swoop. So there we go. It is time for the ultimate challenge. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what we're about to witness. Six world champions on the grid, six of the best drivers in Formula One, and one ambitious challenger. I can't see the outsider winning, but it's a one-off race, so who knows? Six of the best world champions on the current grid of Formula One, and some random guy from Australia sitting on his couch. Away we go for the finale of Champions Mode. Can we be the champion of champions? This six lap race around Kota will decide it all and that those two world champions not really lending themselves too well it seems. It has been comical the spins we've seen Vettel <laughs> do even in this game. That is not supposed to happen. I've never seen that happen but it's funny that it happens here with me today in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that taken into consideration, even if I just finish in P5, that automatically makes me better than two world champions, does it not? And in turn, I should get their world championships. If I beat everyone, I get all their world championships. So I'd end up with too many world championships. Someone should do the math find out how many titles I'd have if I beat all these guys collectively. Bearing in mind that at this point Sebastian Vettel only has two world championships and Lewis Hamilton only has one. Side by side with Alonso just casually and he's gone too. These guys are rubbish. Alright, after an early setback We've clawed in some of the ground again. We're going purple on this second lap, which is exactly what you want to see. Schumacher in third. Button in second. And Hamilton paving the way. Who would have thought, like, in this moment right here, in 2012, no one would have guessed that Hamilton would be within striking distance of all of Schumacher's records. At the time of me recording this, Hamilton only needs seven more wins to be level with Schumacher on 91. One more title, and he's matched him as well. There could be some people watching this in the future, and maybe Hamilton has already done it. Maybe he hasn't. Maybe Hamilton never wins another race again in F1 after the 2019 season. We just don't know. That is the scary thing about the future, isn't it? I am very excited to see what happens in this 2020 Formula 1 season. I did touch upon it briefly with Vettel. Seeing how the Ferrari dynamic evolves between those two. What happens with Mercedes after the rule changes in 2021? What the driver market is going to look like? Is Verstappen still going to be at Red Bull? I should be in rich fuel mixture. That's a lost opportunity. So many things that could potentially happen. Oh, Hamilton has lost the lead. Hamilton was fighting off Schumacher for P3. What's going on here? Actually struggling to make some inroads on these guys. Nice to see that it is actually a challenge at the last grasp. And Daniel Ricciardo. Will he ever win a world title? <laughs> Will Renault ever get better? Does Hulkenberg come back in the future? Who bloody knows? Oh, oh, oh dear. I've really got myself in trouble there. Giving Button a bit of a nudge. Hopefully no penalty. He slows up here. Why have you done that? It's P2. Hamilton is the last man standing between us and about a gazillion world championships. 
to find out where this guy is slow. We're in a 2012 Williams, which was a race winner in the hands of Pastor Maldonado at the Spanish Grand Prix. And all these cars we're fighting against are somewhat faster. Marginally. There's still a difference. Substream. DRS. Can we get this guy on the straight? I'm not too sure how the William handles in terms of straight line performance, but with some DRS aid, it's no slouch. Thank you very much, Jeff. Andy, I've called you about a handful of different names so far in this video. But regardless, we now lead the US Grand Prix. As things stand, we will be the champion of champions. Oh, nice power cut there. Oh, oh, that was emerging into a spin, but thankfully we saved that. F1 2012 is a little bit weird like that. You can throw it in a little bit too fast, and the rear end will just say, no thank you, sir, not today. Final couple of corners. And we'll be heading on to the last lap of this US Grand Prix. I feel like Hamilton has responded a little bit on this last lap. This is definitely going to be my fastest, but Hamilton is staying with us. If anything, kind of closing me in. Definitely closing me in on that third sector. So I've got to keep my wits about me here on this last lap. We are outside of DRS, though. I've just put in, like, a monstrous first sector. They won't, they won't touch me now. Through the famous triple right-hander for the final time. Grasping onto the only turn we have left to remind us of Turkey. The Istanbul circuit through to the final corner. Annoyingly, they've moved the finish line on this game from what should be here to like halfway down the straight. But here we go. We are the champion of champions on F1 2012. That took a lot longer than what I was hoping it would. With six world champions racing, we always knew today would be a special day. With so many champions on the track, it wouldn't have been a surprise to see one of them finishing first at the checkered flag. But it was the Williams driver who powered through the pack to take the race win. Last to first, boys. Get good. I want to have a look at the replay because uh, we can't not talk about that first lap incident between Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen, which uh, probably made things a little bit easier for us in the end. But, like, we still got there, but if we would have more cars to get through, it could have been a much more difficult final lap. Like, oh, that's all Raikkonen's fault, I think. Raikkonen goes to the dive on the inside. Unfortunately, I don't have a better camera angle. All I have is this to go by. But yeah, Kimi has dived in there, tagged Sebastian's left rear tire, and they've both gone for a bit of a synchronized spin. We say adios to those two. And really from there, they, you're not going to recover in a seven-man race in only, what, five or six laps? So that was uh, a big GG for those guys. They came within three seconds of Fernando, which that in itself is pretty impressive. But regardless, we have achieved the ultimate challenge. And uh, there we go. That is this video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more racing game content. Um, oh, we have a movie. Is this like all of the, I guess it's like a, a montage of all the, all the races we did, which is kind of cool. I don't remember this at all. Wheel to wheel with Fernando, him getting the penalty, getting disqualified <laughs> in the Kimi Raikkonen challenge, being absolutely slow as hell uh, at Silverstone and then wiping the field in USA. It has been... It's been, it's been a monument, not monumental, it's been a memorable video. That's the 
adjective I'm looking for. But if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more racing game content. If there's any other classic stuff you want to see on older F1 games, let me know. And I will endeavor to do so in the future. But we are the champion of champions. We have absolutely Michael Phelps this without the performance enhancing drugs. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys for a brand new video very soon.